Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Right Tide, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original presented by Prize Picks. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Subscribe, like, rate us, review us, give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. It is Foxworth Friday. Dominique Foxworth, what's going on? Not much, man. I'm enjoying seeing you back on television regularly. It's uh, enhancing my viewing experience. It has been interesting. I have it, I have thoroughly enjoyed doing this all cast. Check us out um, on True TV, though. I don't know. We're recording this on Thursday. There may not be no games for you to check us out on True TV, vote. But we've been over there on True TV. Me, Adam Lefko, uh, Chris Haynes, Vince Carter, just kind of posting up, chilling, watching games on television. And I got a, I got a couple observations for you here, right? Number one. I got to thank Vince Carter. It's been, and some of the other people who come through, I ain't going to put their names on it, but like it's been validating for me to have somebody up there who understands what I'm talking about, about certain things. Cause he'd be getting just as frustrated by them 14 feet of disappointment as I do. Like it'd be some people out here that had me thinking that I'm the one that's tripping. And it's been real helpful to have a hall of famer over there who see and say the same exact thing. You know what I'm saying? Which just, just lets me know, like some of y'all are just soft. Like you just like like you just not here for truth. I don't know. I don't know who the y'all is you talking about because it feels like nobody really defends Cat. He has a good game. Like it just it feels like the 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 world is uh, has pointed out what Cat is and everyone likes to reinforce it. Man, look, people be on my ass. Why are you so mean to Carl? It's clearly something personal. You seem uh. like you're weird. Like I look. All I'm gonna say is this: it's two people standing here. One of them is Carl Towns, and you going to say the other one is weird. <laughs> I mean, I think it's fair for me to raise a question about what in the world that's about. Like, that that seems impossible to me. But I need to send a particular shout-out to the Minnesota Timberwolves right now, and I mean that at the people who play for them, the people who work around the team, everything else. So it's kind of a joke that we've had about the alt-cast, and it's the truth. Everybody else on the alt-cast, like, they work for Turner in some capacity. They got like contracts, okay? I am just dropping in for a little bit and I'm getting paid by the show, right? I eat what I kill. If there's a show, I get a check, right? And it keeps going up. Um, and that's why you'll hear me out here on TV rooting for my money, right? <laughs> like at the end of the game, I want to be like that meme of that coach. I think he coached A&T, but uh, oh, yeah. bring <laughs> me my money. That's me right now, right? Bring me my money. That's where I'm coming from, okay? That's just what it's been for me for this week and change. And it really didn't turn into bring me my money until after they went down 3-0. Now, every game about, it's about whether Minnesota wins and whether I get my money. And all of that is to say, and you saw what it took for them to win uh, game four. All of that is to say, my money hinges on them 14 feet of disappointment. Like, how them 14 feet show up dictates my money. And I got to tell you, man. I found that to be quite stressful and I'm just doing it for some little side money. Can you imagine if this was like the money that puts your kids through school and, and every day you wake up and you know, I might not eat no more because of the 14 feet. Do you, um, uh, you don't gamble, but is there some level of making the game more enjoyable? Because that's what a lot of people who bet tell me is like, I don't care whether I win or not. Like, I don't care about the game, but when I put some money on it, like it makes it more nah, fun. Nah, nah, nah. And the reason that that's not really the case, like it would never, it would probably never be the case for me. But it really can't be the case in the sense that, as you may have noticed, I find the fourteen feet to be kind of offensive. <laughs> and 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 I know that that's the part that a lot of people find to be weird is that I seem to take personal events at these guys just being who they are. 100% correct. Like that's 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 the truth. Like if you smell just the way you smell, it could be offensive if you don't right. put no deodorant. Some of y'all, I am a firm believer in just be yourself. Right. Some of y'all need to try being somebody else. <laughs> and I'm not saying that that's the case with these dudes. I'm just saying that like yeah, it's it's just it don't hit my sensibilities. That that's they don't offend me. They offend my sensibilities.
It's a kind of a hilarious turn of events, though, for people who are watching the the sitcom that is the Bomani Jones show. It is hilarious <laughs> that the script writers have found it in themselves to have some circuitous route to have Bomani yes. Jones rooting for the people or Dumb. at least the person who in the NBA Dumb. who is he's been most critical of. Both of them. Both of them. Let me tell you something, man. When Carl was hitting them buckets, I was a proud father, man. <laughs> I was a proud dad. Rudy made a couple things happen. I ain't never been so happy to see them see somebody fulfill his potential in my life. I was a proud papa. You are absolutely correct. I want the best. I mean, I've never wanted bad things. In fact, I make the argument that I want better for the 14 feet. In fact, I want better for the 14 feet than the 14 feet want for themselves. <laughs> I think that the... Um... <sighs> There and I'm not saying that you're guilty of this, but I know that I've been working on this in myself. I think I've gotten better, but you get so invested on a take that I find myself rooting to be right and rooting against players who I think stink. And I I just assume that because it feels good to be able to come back out and say, "Told y'all that boy was a bum," but right. I assume that you got to that point with 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 Cat. And I guess you don't have to because he kind of always proves it. So it's just funny to me that part of you, that there's a chance that part of you wants him to do some soft stuff so that you can say, see, told you it was oh, soft. But the no, other no, part no, of you no. is like, toughen up. I need this money. Or I want oh, this be, money at least. Uh, oh, no, I mean, yeah, what need feel very similar. Uh, <laughs> when, 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 you, when you jump on a plane to get the money, what oh, yeah, need yeah, yeah. What yeah, need yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. the exact same thing? No, you're right about that to a degree. And then you have to catch yourself like, yeah. I imagine that you and I both on some times with Josh Allen had to oh, catch yeah. ourselves, right? Oh, yeah. But the Absolutely. issue that we had in that case is actually the same issue that I have with Towns. Because the thing about Towns is he's not terrible. We're yeah. not saying he's the worst player in the NBA. We're not saying that he's any good. That he's not any good. It's none of those things. There was a game that they played against um, Denver where it was very similar to game three of this series. That was the full Carl Anthony Towns experience. And I tweeted, no matter what you think about Carl Anthony Towns, this is the kind of game that makes you think you're right. We all think we're right about him after watching this game. And people were hitting me saying that I was insulting him. And no, it wasn't saying that. He was hitting shots. I can't remember exactly how it went, but I know it was a game where he was hitting shots. He was playing decent defense against Jokic. And he was also out there committing them dumb fouls. And doing the ridiculous stuff like arguing with a ref and not running back on defense. Like all of those things. It was all there. It all existed. And so I don't want to be right about the dude necessarily. What frustrates me is that I so firmly believe that I am right. And I just don't understand who these people are that disagree with me and, and impugn my character based <laughs> on this. <laughs> like, and so like, it, like I do wind up being like, do you see what I'm talking about? And in this case, there's a camera on me every time what I'm talking about happens and a box where my hand just comes up like, see? <laughs> I'm see? speaking of, so there's a couple of things. Well, first of all, let me take a quick 20. Uh, are your, um, your AirPods in the wrong ears? No, they're in the right ears. Oh, okay. All right. Hold they on. It look like, no, they're in the wrong ones, I think. Uh, now, they're the right, now they're in the right ear. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we in business now. All right, hold on. Hey. I, no, 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 leave that in. Leave that oh, okay. in. Leave that in. Go ahead, and leave that in. I, I don't wear. I don't wear AirPods, and so I had not given any thought as to whether or not they were in the right way. I could Bro. hear they was in my ear. Okay, cool. That explains why they've been falling out my ears for the last yeah. week and a half. <laughs> That's what was happening. I was like, I understand. I wear AirPods a lot, and I sometimes gotta adjust them. Once every 30 minutes or so, you was hitting on a 30-second ratio. I'm like, something wrong with my boy ears or his AirPods. And I don't, I don't want to insult him. Maybe he got a small ear canal. Maybe he got a little listening hole. I don't know. But I know that there's a problem. So I'm going to need you to check him out and line them things up. Look at you. You laughing. Your head shaking. They ain't even moving. We in action, baby. We in action. I was, when you said that, I was like, nope. There is nothing wrong with these AirPods. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now we're I, now we're cooking with gas. Nice. The show about to get ten percent better. Oh right. my god! I was thinking about that. I think 
Josh Allen is the one for me that I'm most proud of because there's a thing, there's an evolution that happens. And I said this and I got a lot of like blowback because I was like, I was rooting against Josh Allen because it felt like I, it was because I was spending too much time on Twitter. And it was like the people, I was wrong about Josh Allen coming out. And then the people who was in my mentions, I would look at their timeline and they was talking about Trump this and Trump that. And and the police had a good idea. <laughs> and like they was doing all like, hey, they were scared. They was doing all the stuff that made me unhappy. So I was watching Josh Allen and making him those people. And was like, I wanted him to lose so that I could get on and roast them. <laughs> and then I came around and grew up and got off of social media a little more. And then started watching Josh Allen. I was like, that motherfucker Cole. And he's doing but- the things that I wish quarterbacks would do. <laughs> I still contend, though, we were right when we were right. <laughs> right? Like, that, yeah. that's, what, that's what happens with dudes like this. Yeah. You're not going to get me to say I was always wrong because I wasn't wrong. You was wrong. Why can't you say you was wrong? Why can't you see that this is different? Right. Yeah. They, they, I, don't, they ain't never want to come out and see. That's that's where I struggle. That's where that's that's that's. <laughs> but apparently we can all agree on Rudy. And I actually oh. think that people have been too hard on Rudy. Although, yeah. once again, I'm saying this before game five. It is entirely possible that Rudy came out there and done something like just full Rudy. I think the Rudy thing is, man. <sighs> The problem with Rudy, I think, is that's different from Towns is I think Rudy getting the most out of what Rudy has been given. And I think he's a unique piece that you need to build well around. So, like, I ain't mad at Rudy. Rudy ain't never showed us the promise that he could be more than what Rudy is. Rudy right. is doing it. And then the thing about Rudy is my guy be trying hard on the offensive end. <laughs> I be watching him. And I get, like, personality stuff. I can tell. Like, I don't know Rudy personally, but I can tell by how the people react around him that he a t- he's a tough hang. Rudy's a tough <laughs> hang. And so I get why people may not mess with a Rudy for that reason, but what I don't appreciate is like the Rudy criticism for what he not capable of doing as if right. he not trying. He tried to get you on some on offense. He can't. He tried. He get out on, on the perimeter. And he tried to keep up with Luka Doncic, but he can't. And that's just that's just hard to me. To, and and the, that's the difference between him and Towns. It's Towns like, you could do so much more. We see it. Just do it. Right. Rudy's problem on offense is actually that he does try. Yeah. Like we need <laughs> you to we need you to humble yourself just a little bit. And I know why he don't want to, man. He's like, I'd be out here holding down this whole defense, right? The other thing where I think it's unfair to Rudy is. Our expectation that this seven foot three man is supposed to be Kawhi Leonard on the perimeter and Just locking these he got dudes some down. Awards. Yeah, like come on, like that's not. Now I think there's a fair argument to make against him, and there are a lot of players like this. Some of them all time greats. Where John Stockton is a very interesting example of this. Where by every advanced metric, John Stockton is a better player than Isaiah Thomas. By every single one, pretty much that you can throw out there. But if you need to go out here and get a bucket, John Stockton can't do that for you. Isaiah Thomas can, and John Stockton was not the same playoff performer that he was in the regular season. Rudy Gobert is an example of a guy that's like that. And so in the regular season, his undeniable effect on um, team defense is there, and it matters a lot more. But sometimes we need you to do something. And Jokic feasts on him, for example. These guys get him in switches, and they feast on him. And so, no, he's not the same player in the playoffs that he is in the regular season. But he's not terrible. And when he's not on the floor, they couldn't guard me, you, Sean, L, and Mina. You, you beat you beat me to the point because that was what I was going to say. Is he still? It's not just the regular season because you watch Kyrie the best finisher of his size around the rim. You watch him be influenced by the fact that Rudy is in there. And so we don't get all the stats of his influence. We do get the blocks or um, uh, shots affected, but we don't get guys who like, you know what? We just not going to run the ISO when he in there. We not just going to run a dive when they got uh, Gilbert Brown at the nose right. tackle. Like we don't get that. There's no value for that. And I wanted to push back on one thing you said about we need him to try less on offense is – he don't want to get Tony Allen. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. that's his thing. Oh, like, they're, and they're doing that. They yeah. have Luka guarding him. And that's why that's why he's trying on offense because that's, I mean, that's what really gets him played off the floor in the past. It wasn't that he would get switched on the perimeter. It was that 
the offense would get like backed up, right? When um, Spider yeah. couldn't get in the lane because somebody would hang out there because they was not respecting Rudy. So Rudy, like, you gonna have to guard me. And they tried it last round when they had six five dudes on Rudy. And like, come on, Rudy. If I think we talked about this, if you gonna put somebody that is seven inches smaller than me on me, you gonna have to give me the ball. I'm gonna have to fight <laughs> the coach. Somebody yes, got. Yeah. There's a problem here. I don't give a shit how uncoordinated I am. Give me the ball. Let me tell you this, though. Late in game four, at least, there was a few times that Rudy was wide open, flashing in the post so much bigger than his man that it looked like he was all by himself. And that man was like, anyway, <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's enough of you guys. But no, I think you're right. And they don't get this. We do expect more from Carl. And so when Carl brings it, it's like, there you go, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we seeing it. We seeing it. Um I want to throw something at you, though. It just dawned on me. I feel like we'll just maybe do late before we go to the ad break. But something happened while I was in Atlanta that I thought that you would find interesting. And I'm curious your thoughts on. So um, at Memorial Day, Andre 3000 was playing his flute in the park. There's the jazz festival. He's playing at all the jazz festivals um, around and they booked him and his band. And just so people know, his band is really good. Like you can have your questions about him, but his band is known and those well known. Those people are known and he is actually getting them a lot of shine. Right. By, you know, going all these places. So anyway, Andre playing his flute in the park. I went out there. Spencer came and joined me. I was hanging with some people I went to college with. Like real good time. Right. There was like a two year old running around. You know, that always makes for a good time. And we posted up, we hanging, and Andre come out there and he started playing his flute. And it was coming towards sunset. You couldn't even really see the stage. They had like some mirrors up there. They had a screen. We couldn't even find Andre. Honestly, the flute that he was playing, I didn't even know that was a flute, right? <laughs> like, like when I was a kid, the flute went sideways, right. right? Like it was just a cylinder and you, you know, yeah. but his flute go go straight out like perpendicular to the horizontal plane like i just I hadn't seen no flute like that he was playing his flute and like you know how you go to a recital you're a father you would know what i'm talking about you go to a little dance recital or a school play or whatever it is and the crowd is just a bunch of parents there because they love their kids right they're not there because this is going to be an incredible performance they are there strictly out of the love and affection for these people in their lives. And that's when it dawned on me. Andre is all of our son because yeah. it sounded like a middle school recital. And we was just all there because we love that man so much. Yeah. We love him collectively. We don't complain about it. We don't go, oh, like I, I, we, I, there's been some people who like we have I found we haven't gone over the top in the praise of the flute experiment I also think the flute experiment for what I was seeing might have been better in a small room like he played the blue note in New York a few weeks ago like maybe that would be a better place for it but it just really hit me we love this man so much that we just gonna come out here in the hot and listen to him play his flute yeah I I can't I don't love him as much as that like, I'm not going to go to no flute performance. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't do it. And I think maybe it's also possibly because I am a father. I've had to endure some <laughs> some bad recitals. And it's like, I, I can't imagine why anybody, I ask my parents when they come to see my kids recitals, like, you know, you don't have to, right? Like, I, I can't imagine doing that. I did see that him and Killer Mike and Big Boy, like they had, I saw a clip up of them together at <clears throat> like a Memorial Day cookout or something. Rico. No, it was a, it was, they went to the dungeon for like a Rico Wade. Tribute. Oh, okay. I was, I was very disappointed to see them together. And then when you started telling this story to hear that I, I had high aspirations, I was like, oh, did big boy come out and they dropped the flutes and started rapping? No, that's, that's <laughs> what I wanted. When I saw them together, like, what y'all doing? Don't do this to me. It's like pretending like. Mom and dad go to go on a date together. Like, why y'all going on dates after y'all got a divorce? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Are y'all getting back together or not? Don't play with me. <laughs> no, he just he just played his flute, and you 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 would have you'd have been okay coming to this flute performance. Um, oh, okay, I will okay. I will tell you a phone call that I made when I got on the ground here, and I've made this phone call repeatedly, and you'll probably know what I really said, but I'm going to say it in a certain way now. Um, and I called, I forget who it was that I called when I first got here. And I said that, um, a lot of my life 
has been guided by a somewhat existential question, but it's a question that I wonder the answer to many, many times. And sometimes I come back without an answer. And that question is where they at? You know what I'm saying? Where they at? And the answer, my brother, is always Atlanta. <laughs> the, the that, is, that is that is that is that is always where they are. And 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 just so you know, a lot of them went to go see Andre play his flute. That was um really nice of you to explain it so everyone else could understand. But I think me and a lot of other people understood after you said you would have been all right at this flute. <laughs> Period. It was the inflection. It was the inflection. I guarantee you that there are several people who 30 seconds ago, like me, when you said, oh, no. Oh, no. It's, it's one of them lines where it's like, oh, no. You'd have been all right at this one. And then there's only one thing. Like, it's it's a sad state for, for men. Maybe it's a black man thing. Maybe it's just a man thing. But it's a no. sad state for us where it's like, I'm married and, I ain't, and I'm not trying to get in no trouble. But I know exactly what you were saying. And you're right. I probably would have been all right at that flute festival. I'd have, it'd have been a, it'd have been a time. I hang with my guys, make some new friends, look around, and they, them them toots would have sounded a lot better. Oh. <laughs> y'all, they was doing it, but it also while I was out there, I had a thought because I was there with a friend, and she went to the uh, to the porta potties. Right, came back, she had to tie her dress up in a knot. Right. Because, like, this thing, this is the other thing, too, is, like, I'm in Atlanta. I went to college here. I haven't been here in a while. And I could just randomly hit somebody up and be like, yo, you at the Jazz Fest? All right, I'm about to pull up. Because I had gone to Target, got a couple chairs, made the walk, carrying my chairs through. But I'm like, man, I ain't got no spot. I know somebody going to be here. Let me see if she got a spot, right? And so we pulled up and hung out with them folks, right? And so we pulled up. We set up our chairs. Um, and we was there. And then it was like, I forgot what it was that I was going to say. It's the damnedest thing when that happens. You know what I'm saying? Um, but. Nah, it just left. <laughs> it, it just it'll, it just totally just departed. It'll be back if, if it wants to. If not, yeah, let it happen. If, 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 if not, it just floats away. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 what it is. But uh yeah, Atlanta, big win. Let's go to ads. <laughs> Playoff basketball season is heating up, and prize picks is the most simple way to get in on the action. You just select two or more players pick more or less on their projected stats, and submit your lineup. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. But rather than hearing from me, let's hear from somebody who actually uses Prize Picks. Sean, how's the picking going for you? You know, Bo, you win some, you lose some. I've had some real close breaks, but, you know, my favorite part about prize picks is the injury insurance they offer so that your lineup stay in play, even if one of your players gets hurt this playoff basketball season. So let's say your playoff exits the game and a player exits the game in the first half of the playoffs and doesn't return. Prize picks has your back and it won't count as a loss. And look, not that I want injuries, especially in the playoffs, but it's reassuring that I won't get penalized for it. No, nah, man, that is a big deal. Well, there you go. Sean's asking for injuries. Anyway, make sure you go to prizepicks.com slash Bomani and use code Bomani for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Bomani. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Hey, Dominique, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, apparently Major League Baseball did a project and they went through and did a lot of statistical analysis and they have added the Negro League stats to the Major League Baseball stats, and a lot done changed. Shout out to you, Josh Gibson, yeah. the new batting champion of all time. Ty Cobb's 367 had been the mark for my whole lifetime, and now I believe we're at Josh Gibson's 372. Um, a few other name numbers got thrown in there, and they've 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 done this. Um, I've seen a lot of references to the people who are mad about this on the internet. Um, I imagine a lot of them are Russian. I don't know how much anybody actually cares about this. And the reason I say that is maybe this is the cynic in me, but now that that record book don't really matter like it used to, 
they went ahead and decided to do right. I had the same feeling when I first saw it too, where my first reaction was like, oh, that's dope. That's cool. That's about right. But don't nobody care no more. Once once the steroids era happened, y'all said these numbers don't matter no more. Now nah, y'all gonna let us in? That kind of feels like uh, a tradition that we've grown accustomed to. So yeah, I, I mean, it's still a great thing for them and it's cool, but it felt a little bit, uh, I had, I was of two minds when I heard it. But it makes me wonder, though, and I was thinking about it kind of in a broader sense, what is the relationship of the the baseball fan in general, but the young baseball fan in particular? What is their relationship with those records now? Like, I can tell you right now, um, Hank Aaron has 755 home runs, Babe Ruth 714, Willie Mays 660. Um Hey, uh, Frank Robinson was at 586. I can go up and down. Mike Schmidt had 548. Um, like I can give you those numbers for all those guys to this day. I can still run through a bunch of them. I can't give you every single one. Reggie Jackson, 563. I want to say, I want to say, uh, what's his name? Ernie Banks was at 512. Like I can do that still. Those numbers matter. That 367 for Ty Cobb. I didn't look that up. Yeah. Like being a baseball fan at a certain point, was knowing a lot of those numbers in that way, right? Um, Pete Rose, 4256. Ty Cobb, 4191. Da-da-da. Right. Do people care about that anymore? And I think that, and the reason I ask that also in part is, as we become more sophisticated, we care far less about these raw stats. Yeah. And we care more about rates and more sophisticated things. So, like, you take a guy like Lou Brock, whose advanced numbers weren't that great, but he's got 3,000 hits and he stole a gazillion bases. I don't know how much people care anymore about those raw numbers as we now don't care as much yeah. about the raw numbers. And so now we throw the Negro League numbers in there and good on them for preserving the historical legacy, especially considering this feel like something they decided to do in 2020. You remember that? <laughs> when white people was decided to do all this stuff in 2020 yeah, yeah. and then they was like, never mind. <sighs> Man, it's going to be a weird thing. Um because there's going to come a time where I have grandchildren and I've had my children have been asked by their school to do certain projects with their grandparents and like ask about a specific time and what it was like. There's absolutely going to be a time when my grandkids, if I have them, want to interview me about 2020. And it's going to be a weird conversation because they're going to expect me to talk about how bad the pandemic was. I'm going to say it was a glorious time, young baby Foxworth. Let me let you know. It was wonderful. All the whites in the country. It was the first time in the history of America that all the whites, they shut up and they said, I want to hear what you got to say. And guess what, young lad or lass, let me have you know. They listened and it felt genuine. I thought they cared. And they yeah. were like, but it was a global pandemic. You could, so what? The whites was listening. <laughs> Dog, 2020 was Amsterdam. <laughs> like, now that we look, now that we look back on yep. it, that after that, that little run in 2020 was Amsterdam. The next thing you know, the ghetto bird was in the sky. The wagons was on the ground, <sighs> and they they just rolled in there with zip ties, <laughs> and they was they was slagging feeds and hoppers alike. Just banging their asses against the wall. Oh gosh, yeah. The um, as it um pertains to baseball. So my son has gotten into baseball recently. Is random as hell. Where he um he's going to a new school, and the coach at the new school like saw him playing with some friends, and was like, "You should play baseball." And I didn't say anything to him, but I was like, "I don't. I mean, you're pretty athletic, but I don't know if the hand-eye coordination is there." But anyway. That's aside. We've been playing baseball a lot more. And I all honestly, I was like, I didn't grow up watching baseball. I can't teach you nothing about this. So we're going to find somebody to help coach and get him right for baseball. But he loves it. And it's, it shocked me because he's a little boy in this era where everything is fast and um, videos are quick. Like kids these days. Oh, I hit him with the kids these days. They watch shows, but they don't watch shows as much. Like they rather... They're like clips and videos, and that's what they want to watch. But he's sitting and watch a whole baseball game by his damn self because I ain't going to watch that shit. <laughs> I <laughs> nah, mean, it's a big they, game. I watch it. Baseball is a, smart, is a great smart kid game, man. Like, yeah. that was the thing for me, especially when I was, like, really young, like 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 single digits. Yeah. 
Oh, man, it was the best. The problem with being a smart kid playing baseball, though, with the rest of my friends was it was very clear that they did not watch nearly as much baseball as I did and therefore didn't understand things that, to me, seemed very obvious. For example, the whole science of tagging up when the ball is in the air and the fact that if it's two outs, there's no need to tag up. You might as well just go. I once almost got into a fight with one of my teammates because I pushed him off the base (laughs) because he was tagging up. And there was no need. And by the way, so proud of himself for knowing to tag up. That's sad. That's unfortunate. Yeah. You, you was playing with, with remedial baseball players. Well, I guess yeah, they were probably yeah. age appropriate and you was advanced. Yeah, yeah. And you can like really like exceed your physical talents yeah. as the as the, That's smart the thing is like playing I, baseball. I've been coaching flag football for uh two seasons now and i've been going to kids athletics for a long time and there is something to be said for like my son is an example where there are better athletes on the flag football team and he's good but there are better athletes but he also like has an understanding of sports that is not always like you said you were a smart kid you were smart in school and smart in sports that don't always translate and a lot of my son's friends are really smart kids or really good athletes. And then they get out there and like, they'll make a play just cause they're better athletes than everybody else. But then they do something so ridiculous and stupid, just not understand the principles of it. And it goes a long, long way. And no matter how much you teach them, it, it feels like kind of a, I know it's like a sports instinct thing where it's like some people feel comfortable with this and they feel comfortable out there. And you tell them something like some people are born with a better propensity for math. There's some people who just understand sports concepts and some kids just ain't never going to get it. I was baseball smart. Yeah. Basketball (laughs) smart. (laughs) Basketball, man. Basketball to me just always felt like I was running on the interstate. (laughs) Maybe in the same direction, maybe in the wrong direction, but it's a (laughs) lot going on. It's a lot going on at run time. And I'm supposed to do all this while running. Yeah. I think that we underappreciate how important teammates are in basketball, you know, because like being, and again, this is from my experience at like a bunch of youth sports, when they got a good coach and some good players when who understand spacing and that stuff is like natural. You can't teach spacing. That's like natural understanding. It makes it so much easier. You see it in the NBA also with like a lot of these, players that are on the Mavs that weren't all that good at other places. And now they balling with the Mavs. It's like, yeah, the teammates in basketball (laughs) matters so much like Aaron Gordon in Denver. Like, yeah, yeah, that dude is a key piece now (laughs) next to uh, Jokic. Yeah. Like I was actually, when I played a little football, I was actually pretty football smart, but uh, I don't think I was, Smart was not going to get me to where I needed to be for that to be a reasonable, uh, reasonable so, place for me to guess, get down. I, I don't think I could ever be smart enough to make football work for me. Yeah, my guess is that you were football smart, but you were also regular smart, which conflicts with the football <laughs> smart because football smart yes. is like, I know what I need to do here. Then regular smart is like, but why <laughs> yeah. do I well, want to well, do that? Well, I had the regular smart that is actually less about being regular smart and just not being regular stupid and just recognizing everybody's way bigger than me. Like, you got to think about this. When I played in seventh grade, and I talk about this all the time, the rollover date for birthdays uh, for your grade in Texas is is September 1, right? So if you are, your birthday is August 31st, you're in a different grade than the person September 1 or 2nd, whatever it is, right? My birthday is August 26th. So for my right grade, I'm younger than everybody else. And then we did a grade skipping. And then in seventh grade, nobody has a greater advantage than the kid who got left back a grade. (laughs) That's that's a that's a that's a very important point. The best athlete in our grade, I'll never forget his birthday was September 30th, 1977. My birthday was August 26, 1980. Okay. You see, you see, you see where I'm at with this. So he is 14 years old and I am 11. And we're in the same place. It was never going to happen. So what they did, what they do a seventh grade football for all the little guys, they put you all at free safety, right? You're 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. Nobody's going to throw the ball. 
right? But you get to get out there and feel like you do something. But I was football smart, so yeah. I could figure out where to be. <laughs> and really, honestly, man, I was just getting myself in a position to get my ass toe up. Like, I never get yeah. one day, boy. I went there. They ran that fullback dive. I was on it. Nobody else made it. I got there. I got low. I ain't getting low enough, man. Uh. That boy poke chop with all there's a Mexican dude we call poke chop. You know it was real. He got down. He got up. He threw me back. It was like, uh, it's like he took a jump shot. Like he might as well finish, like finish and just held it, right? Ugh. Oh, it was like a cartoon, man. Like my arms is flying. Ugh. That's that must maybe be, this wasn't for me. Maybe that's some Texas shit where they don't actually separate you by age. I mean by weight. Cause they they no, had this is school. I know, this that's what school. I'm saying. Oh, y'all had pads on in school? In seventh grade? Yeah, this is some Texas ass shit here, boy. <laughs> y'all had so hold on, y'all would play football, tackle football with helmets and shoulder pads in school. I mean, at the middle of the team. Yeah, that's outrageous to me. We didn't have that. You high school, so we were that was in practice. Corner. That was in practice. That was in practice for the you know for the football team. Yeah, we didn't have that. We didn't have that. Oh, we really? Pop Warner. And then in Pop Warner, they would have age groups, but the age groups also had weight classes. And if you oh, were, yeah, see that I do. Yeah. So if you were to the people who had the advantage, which it kind of leveled out, was like if you were an older kid, it was older but lighter. They put you mm-hmm. in the younger group and you yeah. play in a young group, but you're not that big. They was never gonna put nobody. Like everybody on the field was around the same size, pretty much. Yeah, no, nah, this this seventh grade football, baby. I realized that Texas was different about football when in third grade. That was the first year after we moved. I was in third grade. And we in PE, we was playing football. And of course, everybody was very excited to play football. Uh, them boys got in a huddle and was actually calling plays with the expectation that people they was like, all right, we gonna run a right sweep. <laughs> what is a sweep and what am i supposed to do here like like y'all all all know what to do that was the part that got me now one person was like hey 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 so what am i supposed to do here Uh, uh, uh. and as i recall we ran a sweep it must have been reasonably effective i like the idea that like in other states and cities they are kind of screening kids for like the special intellects like everyone's taking these standardized tests so we can know like who's the smart one in texas they like hey everybody play football who who here has value yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. which one of you guys don't oh yeah yeah never forget we was in eighth grade the high school coaches came down to inspect all the eighth graders to figure out who was going to be providing what at the next level if that ain't the slaviest shit, yeah, dog. But they wasn't doing it. I mean, it wasn't just us. They was doing it too. Oh, yeah. They was doing I, it to the white boys oh, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they the same way. It was like this is where your most value can be uh, captured. Ain't none of y'all gonna win no Nobel Prize. Maybe one of y'all can win us a state championship. Line yeah. it up. <laughs> the, but um, what I'll always remember, because they were like, you know, I told them like, I ain't playing no ninth grade football, man. Like I ain't really, I wasn't really playing no eighth grade football because when I played seventh grade. Hey, man, I come home from, from, from practice tired. I wasn't doing no homework. My yeah. parents wasn't really going for that. And so I ain't playing no eighth grade football. And them, them cats was actually disappointed that I wouldn't go play ninth grade football. And to this day, I don't understand why. Yeah. I, it, it like, feels they, like You want to talk about seeing a future that I did not have. <laughs> but it wasn't about that. It's like, it feels like you you got there after like, you walked into a culture that already existed. It sounds like to me that, hey, this is what the guys do. Why are you not yes. doing what the guys do? You wanted exactly. the guys, right? Yeah. So exactly. They, they weren't disappointed because you wasn't scoring no touchdowns. They were disappointed because you wasn't going to be one of the guys. They was looking yeah, out for you. The coaches could not understand somebody, even though I'm shorter than everybody yeah. pretty much. I'm skinnier than everybody. They still like, but you don't want to come out here and play uh, death ball? <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do. You know, the um the puberty thing and the growth spurt thing. So I've become a track dad recently. And so my oldest daughter, and she's fast. She's doing really well in her high school track team. But she's also on a club track team. And track meets, I don't know if you know this, like an all-day affair. By an all-day affair, I mean all damn day. We got that 11, and we ain't leave till 8 o'clock. And that was because it started thunderstorming. 
when she didn't even get to run her 100 meter finals. But anyway, the discrepancy in the ages from 11 to 12 is one grouping, 13 to 14 is the next grouping. And my daughter's 13. She's in the 13 to 14 grouping. But like we watch all these people race. And that is the most outrageous thing ever when you see that there are 11 to 12 or 13 to 14, and there are women out there running next to tiny little, like it's the most ridiculous thing where it's like, it's a girl that's that's five, six and has the body of an adult woman next to a girl who's four, seven and just built like a stick, like a little ass baby boy. And they just be next <laughs> to each other lined up. It's the most ridiculous thing ever because you don't know when puberty is going to gonna hit. Like that right. age range is crazy. And I always remember hearing it about boys where like the girls often hit it first and then it's just a bunch of boys in class with women. And, right. <laughs> excuse me. Watching these track meets, it's just women running against children. I had never quite thought about that. Yeah, it's crazy. The only, thing, the only thing worse than that is that time Jabal Charles is in the Special Olympics. You ever hear about that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed. I shouldn't have brought that up. It's a very uncomfortable topic. Yeah. And but I'm, la- I'm you, here laughing. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, um jamal charles has talked uh, he's talked about this like he's if you go to the special olympics website like he's a big advocate for the special olympics because he said that he competed in the special olympics as a kid and it's it's the first place he'd ever like competed in sports and it gave him the confidence that he needed and i'm just like what am i supposed to do with this guy (laughs) what what like like you ever seen this something about mary yeah what am I supposed to do with this, guys? That's all I'm asking. What What am I? How, how was this allowed to happen? See, you 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 put me in a tough spot here, man. Because I just I, I no no no. The fair question I think we can all answer is how was this allowed to happen? Yeah, because I can 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 you can you imagine if you took one of your kids to go compete at the Special Olympics? Like the Special Olympics is not a place where you're supposed to show up and everybody's playing for second. I don't feel like that's, that's like, like it's just transparently obvious. We're all, you know, you know, it was some mad parents out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a request. We'd like to a, talk about something else. No, no, no. Like no. I'm, a, I'm, a, else? I'm a request a 10 second play to music. It's going to be quick. Um, here we go. Hit it, Sean. That's how we wound up in the Special Olympics. I played with a lot of people, and there are a lot of people who I think had some uh, differences, shall we say, like neurodivergencies. Some of them, it made them better. So I can't imagine, like, there there has to be some... uh, I guess not. Like, you can't discriminate. The whole point of Special Olympics is not to discriminate, to allow people to perform. But I feel like Jamal Charles ass, bruh, take your ass over there to the track meet that I had to go to. I, yeah, that yeah I'm just saying, there were other places for him to run. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I would also like to say something else. So for people... I've had people accuse me of being high on my own broadcast since we've been here because they say my eyes are low, but that's not what's happening here. We're in a different place. We've had to use a different setup. So I got this laptop that's in front of me and this is where Dominique's face is or where I'll see Sean or where I'll see the guests. And then we got the camera that's up here to the side. And, you know, it's a little, I got to, you know, so I tend to be um, looking down over here when I am talking to you. Yeah, you explain none of these people. What if you was high? You want to be leaving the man alone. Let him live. Hey, you know. Oh, uh, okay. Damn, I forgot what I was gonna say again, which <laughs> yeah, I will note that, is not on, doing that, much. Bro. It's not doing much. It's not it's it's not doing much to help me in what it is that I want to say or discuss. What were we just talking about? You tell uh, me what we were talking, talking about, about track meet, Jamal Charles, um running in the Special Olympics. Uh yeah, I said that there was other places yeah, for, him for him to, to go. Mm-hmm. Damn. I do, I'm not doing myself any favors um, in this moment. That's on me. 
Yeah. The um, I will say this though. I was the track meet life is an interesting one in that it's um my daughter wanted to run club track. I never ran track before. I I didn't really necessarily want to tell like just run with your school, whatever. So I will say that there is a a segment of society that I am very comfortable and familiar with that my daughter was not experiencing at her private school track meet. Oh yes. And I didn't realize this, but when she first, like she want to run club track, I was like, Oh, you want to be around. <clears throat> and this is unfair for me. Cause I was like, you running track here. You running track here. I was like, Oh, you just trying to like be around some boys or something. And she was like, no. Uh, and she made it very clear that it was about black people and a segment yes. of black people that she only sees at family functions. And so she said, that's why she wanted to go do it. And I was like, all right, well, you got it. Cause it was a whole cookout. I ain't never get, I ain't never been noticed that many times in my life. People was like, Hey, Foxworth, you know the show? Foxworth Fridays. I was like, yeah, I felt comfortable as hell. And I was so proud of her cause she felt comfortable and she sought it out because I was failing her and not providing enough of it. Duh. I thought you did it. Over. I thought that was kind of the point. Like I knew a woman who grew up in the same part of Houston as me. And she said her daddy saw her dancing at a party once and immediately put them in track. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah. I got another partner who I know was listening to this. And I love this. He and I were talking about this uh, he in California. He lived in Pasadena. And he said he had to have a discussion. With his, I understand he didn't grow up the hard life himself, but he said he came and talked to his wife and was like, look, I need you to understand. These kids need to struggle, right? Like he was like, we got, we got, we got to change the stairmaster set in just a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So he said his daughter's in dance. He said he got her in the Debbie Allen dance school, <laughs> and and the best way that he described it, which might not make sense to all of you, but for those of you who hear this will know exactly what he's saying. He was like, it's not south of the ten, but it's only one block north. It's just on the other side of the tent. But he was like, I have got to, got to. He said he got in there and he said, oh, it's like dance, right? So you know, like the 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 culture that is surrounded that if it's in the culture. And he was like, she gonna have to learn. She gonna need to, she gonna need to get this. I yeah. shout out to your daughter for being yeah, like, yo, man, did. I got, to, I got to get the vibes. I can tell you the, I can tell you the full story is that, so uh, she, the the track club that she found and like she's 13 she's not working in that so she's like i want to join this club nah that is all the way on the other part of other side of town like a different it's in southeast dc and it is a oh. it is at um they practice at anacostia high school and so we had to do traffic at that time of day and i was like i understand what you are looking for that you will definitely find it there but what i'm ain't gonna do is go there now it's how how does the Anacostia of today relate to it's the, the same. Anacostia of say the turn of the century? It's okay. the same. It's the okay. well, it's a little less because uh there are different um substances. So it might be gotcha. a little less, but it's but the, we still it talking it like we talking, No. It we talking like Good Hope Road, Anacostia, like we okay. Yeah, and so yeah, so we uh we had, we chose another track club that was easy to get to, but it's still the the experience that she was looking for. It's a lot of braids, edges be laid before the meet. It's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of that, and she is soaking it all in. And I've never seen her more comfortable. And you know what helps? She be riding on these motherfuckers, riding <laughs> on their ass. That always helps. Like if, if she was insecure and uncomfortable when she got there, and, and then they started practicing. Man, here, that it changes here. things look here man i know a little something about your wife and like just to give the people context dominique's father-in-law at after one of his accomplishments i think it was finishing at harvard gave him a rolex because he's a man who understands that a man like dominique should have a <laughs> rolex okay right like that's just this is this yeah. is just where they coming from i yeah. say that with absolutely no judgment it's just to give you a picture of what it is i am very curious how ashley is going to deal with this if your daughter becomes all the way southeast dc or wherever they at track girl and she starts showing up with nails like this and she want to get a, some particular hairstyles yeah. and the longest lashes that are ever so, made because i don't feel like that's gonna fly nah i think that all of that will fly i and, and uh, well i guess guess i can never say never i don't see that happening but 
all that I don't think will bother Ashley. I think, and I've mentioned this to you before, I might get in trouble for sharing this, but Ashley's family, like many families, are only one degree removed. And so, like, her father became Oh, that's a right. That's right. Yeah, her that's father right. became a doctor because her grandfather was a numbers runner. And, and could afford to send him to law school. So, like, she's completely comfortable in the element. The person who would have a problem is me because I didn't do all this so we could do that. <laughs> like, I'd have been, so, like, I'm cool. I'm cool. You ain't come this far to come this far. <laughs> I'm cool. Like, I want you to be comfortable everywhere, but don't, hey, you. it's about the knuckleheads now. You better bring somebody who got uh, eventually. I know that I'm getting close to that time where I'm gonna have to be. I'm gonna oh, have to let my baby see. go out on a date. Nah, that's don't, gonna see. That's don't gonna bring no problem. motherfucker around here who ain't got his shit together. I don't care nah, where he's from. Got to have his shit together. But, but Dominique, Dominique, I don't you and care. I both know you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You and I both know this, and I can't explain it. And I'd love to maybe have one of our regular lady guests on here to help us talk about this. But every woman that I know. No matter how classy, no matter how dignified, no matter how intelligent, no matter how successful, has had one completely worthless man that she loved. Okay. Not just liked, not just hold dated. On, hold on. Loved. Hold on. I understand that. But how did any of their daddies feel about it? But no, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> I just all I'm no, all I'm saying is this. I'm trying to help you out, right? You just kind of have to understand that this is a rite of passage. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. What is uh, part of that rite of passage is having to look your angry daddy in his goddamn yes, face. It is. So I, no. I, hey, I don't, it may come to that. But what I want you to know is I ain't never going to approve of it. And I don't care where he's from, but I care. And I don't care how he talk. I care that he, he wants better for us. That's all. You just gotta hope it ain't one of the like the like the, the, the extremes of the knuckleheads are two. The one that show up at the door, sup unk, where my girl at, or the one who pull up to the crib and hits you with this one. Uh, uh, uh. And he just wait out there. I've been in fights before. That that's a discussion for another day and a topic that I don't think is broached nearly enough is at what age it's appropriate to fight a young man, because that age is not 18. <laughs> the number is lower than 18. I don't think people want to be honest about this fact, but that age is a little closer to 16 or 15. It just, it's, I'm not going to go out there and swing on immediately, but I have some harsh words. His reaction is going to determine what happens next. <laughs> yes. And yes. like, there are very few things in this world that I am willing to die for, but that is absolutely one of them. So oh, I don't know how knuckly, I don't know how knuckly his head going to be, but he going to have to kill me. I know that. <laughs> Say, Unc, it's my time. You you trying to you trying to trigger me now? Okay, <laughs> no, we'll no, I'm just, we'll I'm see. Just, uh, by the way, I realized what I was talking about before. Okay, so I have to look down. So I have to look at myself a little bit more. I kind of have to hunch it. Down. I don't have to hunch a bit, but you know how that stuff works. And I was looking, and you know, been talking about this. I got to say, Dominique, me and you, we do a very uh trappy program. <laughs> I'm looking at you. I'm looking at me. I don't know. I don't know if 52 Man Podcast is bringing the traps like we bringing traps right now, dog. You got better traps than me. I, yeah, that's some that's some nice trap nah, you game just, right you, there. You just you just used to your traps. Yeah. I've been over here like that's the thing. Look at here, man. Hanging out with a professional athlete is one thing. With a professional athlete is like an outsized professional athlete. You yeah. can never be that. But you the worst for dudes because you just seemingly regular human. But yeah. actually, not at all. Yeah. the The thing is, I think maybe I appreciate your traps because I know where they came from. My traps are much deflated. Like I can show you a picture. I'll show you my combine picture. These are not traps. <laughs> that was when it was every day, twice a day, uh, working out and lifting, and then it was it was no neck time. It was my actually when we dated, she said she that I look like a turtle. You look like you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> like you look like all the time, like you ain't know what you mean. What you mean? <laughs> Dominique, Dominique sent me a picture when he was six years old with the oh, washboard. Yeah. <laughs> six years old. Six years old. My brother used to hate on me because my brother's, uh, my daddy's body type, mm -hmm. the body type from my dad's side of the family is different than the body type from my mom's side of the family. Right. My mom's father was like 6'3", 270 and born in 1909, right? He was like the biggest dude that anybody knew. Uh, my brother's body goes toward that direction, but not so much. My dad built like me. Right. Like the, the progression 
has basically gone in that whole same direction. And so my brother used to always be like, you ain't do nothing to get them abs. Right? Hater, hater. But now that I'm starting to look more like a middle-aged man, I got to say, he was 100% correct because they are leaving <laughs> me, boy. They are not. And I be working out, dog. I be doing that yeah, core. I be yeah. doing all the stuff. <laughs> They, they 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 go on the way a little bit and I gotta fix that dog. I gotta yeah. fix that. Yeah, no, my, my son is starting to enter that age where he, he like lays out his clothes and start caring about the way he look. And he also like it seems like all of our kids got like my body type, which is pretty lean, pretty athletic looking, which works for them. But he be trying to wear tank tops all the time at eleven years oh. old. Like, man, you don't put a damn shirt on. Walk around a tank top. <laughs> you got these muscles that that I that I handed you. You ain't earned not damn one of them cuts. Put a, put a damn shirt on until you start lifting weights, son. You sound like my you sound like my dad talking about my grades. <laughs> hey, study. <laughs> you got this from us. You're welcome. <laughs> that is Dominique Fosworth. Check him out. All the Dominique Fosworth show available where all fine podcasts are available. My man, I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, Sean, you got prize picks for the people? I sure do. We got a big uh, UFC card coming up, and thanks to prize picks, I got a great deal on Dustin Poirier, 0.5 significant strikes. If he's in a fight, he's going to throw more than one punch, so that's a good bet there. Sean Strickland, 119.5 significant strikes. I'm going to take more there. And Kevin, the trailblazer Holland, 41.5 significant strikes. Let's take more there, Bo. This is the first MMA picks i've done on the show i'm curious if you have any interest in ufc or anything like that i don't hang out places that people don't want me at <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i look at the ufc crowd and it's a bunch of people who are glad i'm not there yeah i like watching from the tv you know i don't yes. need to be there there we go. But I appreciate you, man. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Right Time. We do this three times a week. That's Sean Yu. He handles everything behind the scenes. Thank you, my man. Uh, remember, hit the voicemail line, 323-596-7767. 323-596-7767. We'll do another Ask Me Anything. Uh, remember, follow The Right Time. Rate us. Review us. Give us five stars. Oh, almost forgot. Our hip-hop series continues on YouTube. Up next, I think it'll be up by the time you hear this, Southern Playalistic Cadillac Funky Music by Outkast. It is up, so be sure to go check that out. Remember, follow the right time. Rate us. Review us. Give us five stars. You only give us four stars. I'm inclined to believe you are a hater. We'll talk to you guys in a couple of days. Take it easy. 